Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Laura. This is the Last Minute Laura channel. And when you come here, you can usually find me making something. Today, I am going to be showing you how I made this really fun green triangle poncho shawl shrug thing. It's really cozy, it's cute, and I think that it's a pretty quick and easy project. You could definitely get it done in a day. And if you make it green and maybe add some little shamrock design to it, you can make it a St. Patrick's Day project. And that is kind of how I am taking this. For this project, you are going to need just a couple of things. You're gonna need a six millimeter hook. I am using this ergonomic one. If I can find a link for it, I will link it down below along with any and all other supplies that I use. You're also gonna need some yarn. I'm going to be using two balls of yarn. One is a naturally dyed ball of yarn that I made with some sock weight Briggs and Little Wool. And the other ball of yarn is a green sock yarn. Together they make up probably like a number three weight yarn because they're like two number ones but one's a little bit shaggy. Anyway, if you're making a bigger one, you'll need more yarn. I'm doing probably about a ladies medium. You'll need scissors and you'll need a yarn needle as well. The stitches I'm going to be using in this project are the double crochet, the chain stitch, the front post, back post, double crochet, and the single crochet. I may also do some blanket stitches in the end for assembly. That is what you'll be needing for this one. And if you like this pattern, this little bullet journal pattern that I've got, the bullet journal spread, I've got the written instructions as well. Join my Patreon for two bucks a month. You will get the written patterns and access to the Discord so you can ask questions if you're having trouble with anything. If this sounds like something that you're interested in making, this little spring shawl cowl, grab your supplies and let's do it. So to begin, I am going to do a slip stitch. Then I'm gonna chain six and slip stitch the round together. One, two, three, four, five and six. Then I'll slip stitch at that first stitch. Then I'm going to chain up five. One, two, three, four, and five. Then I'm going to double crochet into that middle stitch, into that big circle, into the round, I'm going to do five double crochets. So one, two, then I'm going to chain three, one, two, and three. Then I'm going to do five more double crochets into that round. And then I'm going to chain three again, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to do four double crochets into that round. One, and four. The reason we're only doing four instead of five like we've done for the other two sides is because that initial chain five that we did, it's the chain three of the corner plus two additional chains. Those two additional chains are representing one double crochet stitch. So we're going to attach with a slip stitch at that second chain. So there's chain one, chain two. We're gonna just put the hook in at that point and slip stitch together. And then we're going to do a chain three. One, two, and three. I'm gonna turn the work at this point and I'm going to be working in the opposite direction that I was. So I'm not going to keep working in the round the same way. I'm gonna chain up and then I'm gonna turn the work. That way I'm working across the double crochet stitches to start. So to start, we're going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across. When you get to the corner, I will meet you back there and that's gonna be where we uh, <laughs> do the corner. If you don't know how to do a double crochet stitch or any of this is looking confusing to you, just check the links in the description below. I will link all related tutorials for any stitches or things you need to know in order to get this uh, project done. So just check that out. Also the iCard, I'll put it in the iCard. 
Okay, so here I am at the corner. What I'm gonna do in that corner stitch is two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet. So into that big chain three space, I'm going to do two double crochets. There's one and there's two. Then I'm gonna do a chain three, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to do two double crochets in that corner again. And then I'm going to do double crochets all the way to the next corner. One double crochet stitch in each stitch across until I reach the next corner. I'm at that next corner now. So at the corner, I'm going to do two double crochets and then a chain three and then two double crochets. So there's my two double crochets, chain one, two, and three, and then another two, one, and two. And now I'm going to just double crochet down this end all the way to the next corner. In the next corner, I am going to be doing the exact same thing, two double crochets, chain three, two double crochets. But I will meet you at that corner. All right, so I'm at that corner now. I'm going to do two double crochets and then a chain three, one, two, and three. And then two more double crochets. And then I'm back at the first stitch. So I'm just going to slip stitch the round together at that first stitch. And then I'm going to chain up three again, two and three. This time I'm not gonna turn. And I am just going to repeat this pattern for a whole bunch of rows. In total, I am going to be doing 15 rounds with this exact repeat, just double crocheting all the way to the corner. And then in each corner stitch, I'm going to do two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet and then double crochet across to the next corner. And I'm just gonna keep doing that slip stitching at the end of each round to connect to continue the rounds. And I'm going to do that all the way up till row number 15, or round number 15 rather. Uh, so there we are, I'm at another corner now. Two double crochet, chain three, and two double crochet. So I am just going to zoom through the next few rows, I'll meet you back here once I've hit row number 15, and then I will show you what we're going to be getting to next in order to make this into an actual garment. So I will see you at row number 15, just following the exact same um, repeat of double crochet to the corner, two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet in each corner and then double crochet to the next corner. I will see you when I get there. And hey friends, before we get back into the tutorial, I just wanna remind you to click the like button and if you're new, subscribe. We have lots of fun adventures on this channel. I make all kinds of things and I would love to have you along for the journey. So definitely click that subscribe button and uh, don't forget to like the video because it really does help the channel grow and it means a lot to me, each and every one of you who hit that like button. So definitely click the like. Okay, so I'm just at the end of that last row now. I'm going to cut my yarn here and I'm going to reattach, but with two strands of the green yarn. So not the green and tan anymore. Now I'm gonna do two strands of the green and I'm going to go around just one round, one more round. So total, I think I'm at 17 rows, um, 16 rows of the green and tan. And now I'm gonna do one more row of just plain green. So I will meet you back when I finish this last row of double crocheting all the way around. I'll start my row with a chain three, skip the first stitch, 
double crochet into the second stitch. And then I'm gonna double crochet to each corner and in the corners I'm doing two double crochets, then chain three, then two more double crochets, and then I'm double crocheting across all of the straight edges. So I'm gonna just repeat that same thing I did up until this point, but now I'm doing it with the double green. So I will see you when I make it back around at the end of this round. Now that I'm done that last round, uh, I'm going to take this to the bathtub and soak it in some warm water with some wool wash. And then I'm gonna block it out and let it dry for the next day, day and a half. Uh, and I will come back once it is completely dry and nice and flat and triangular and both pieces look exactly the same size um, because that will make the final project look really good. So if you're doing it also, you don't necessarily need to block it but I do think that it's gonna make it a little bit cleaner and crisper for this, just cause it's such a sharp triangle, the whole project is. So anywho, um, yeah, I'm going to block this and then I will come back when it's time to put it together and uh, add that nice big chunky collar. See you then. Okay, so now the triangles are dry it's been a couple of days. They are blocked out nice and flat. I'm going to give you my final measurements for these so you can see if you're gonna be making it along with me, what kind of measurements we've got. So uh, one side of the triangle is about 24, oops, 25 inches or about 65 centimeters. And then from the middle, out to the tip of one of the corners of the triangle. It's 15 inches or 38, 39 centimeters. So I hope that helps. Now we are going to be putting it together. So I've got both pieces here. I've layered them one on top of the other and then look at your triangle to see which side is prettiest, which side is ugliest. There's gonna be an ugly side. For me, usually that's the side that has my join. So I don't want that to be super noticeable. So I don't want it to be on the top around where my neck will be, for example. If I did that, then you would be able to see that sort of ugliness every time you saw the shirt. Um, so to avoid that, I'm just gonna put it on one of the lower ends and it won't be so noticeable. So I've decided these two sides are the ones that I'm going to put together. And now it's time to actually put them together. So I'm going to do single crochets in order to put this together. I'm gonna work from the corner in. What you can do is hold the triangle up to your chest like this and kind of pin or pinch where you think the shoulders would look good. I'm going to be doing about 20 stitches. That's my plan. So I'm gonna start in that corner stitch on both pieces of fabric. I'm gonna pull up a loop with my green yarn and then I'm going to chain one. I'm gonna weave that tail in as I go with my crochet. But what I'm gonna do is single crochet into the first 20 stitches. And that's how I'm going to secure these two shoulder seams together. I'm just going to single crochet. And I think I'm going to single crochet into the tops of the stitches, not through the entire, um, between the two columns. I'm just gonna do regular single crochets for this. I think that will look best. You can do blanket stitches if you'd like. You could also do slip stitches. Whatever you wanna to do to put this together is gonna to work. So do what makes you comfortable. But I'm gonna go in for 20 stitches. You don't have to do 20 stitches though. If you want a wider shoulder, a smaller neck hole, you could go 25 stitches. If you want it to be just attached on the corners of your shoulders, then you could go with 10 stitches or five stitches. It's completely up to you. I'm just eyeballing it and thinking 20 stitches is gonna be just about perfect for me. So I'm going to just single crochet those two shoulders together. And once I've finished doing that, I will meet you back here and it will be time to do the fun, thick neckline. Okay, so I just finished attaching the second shoulder now. And instead of securing off my yarn and weaving my end in, I'm just gonna leave everything as it is on that 20th stitch. 
but I'm going to cut one of the strands of yarn. I want to be working for this collar portion with just one strand of yarn. So I'm going to cut off one of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to chain up two. So I'm going to pull the first chain really tight and the second chain I'm going to leave as normal. And now we're working into the double crochet stitches from the actual triangle, but I'm going to do the front post, back post double crochet now. So I'm going to start with a front post and I'm just going to do my regular front post, back post, double crochet repeat, nothing too fancy, just front post, back post, repeat all the way around. I'll go over that shoulder seam with either a front post or a back post, and then I'll make it all the way back to the beginning. And I'm actually going to do five to 10 rounds of this. I'm saying five to 10 because you can choose what works for you. I'm going to be on the upper end. I think I'm going to be around 10 rounds. I'm going to do of this because I want a nice chunky sort of ribbed stitch collar on this, but you can do five rounds. You could do two rounds. You don't really have to do it if you don't want to at all, but if you want to do the collar like me, do 10 rounds of front post, back post, double crochet on that neckline left open from where you single crocheted your shoulder seams together. So that's going to take me a couple of minutes. I might switch hook sizes in here too. So if you notice that the hook is uh, a little bit smaller halfway through, it's because I think that the six millimeter hook with only one strand Although it's cute, I think it might be even cuter and more defined with a smaller hook. So I think I'm gonna to switch to like a 4.5 millimeter hook about halfway through here just to tighten it up even more. So I want to have a bit of a transition between the body portion and the collar. And that is what the six millimeter hook is going to do for us. So we do one round with the six millimeter hook. <laughs> Hi, peekaboo one round with the six millimeter hook with one strand of yarn, followed by nine more rounds with the 4.5 millimeter hook and the one strand of yarn. And you'll see how that's gonna come together really cool. So I'm gonna just work my way around and I will see you once I get to the end of my front post, back post, double crochet rows. If you would like to learn a little bit more of a detailed run through of the front post, back post, double crochet, which is a very basic crochet rib stitch, I will link that tutorial in the description box below, as well as in the I card just at the top of the screen right now. So you can learn that stitch so that you can come back here and make this collar. All right, I'm going to go through this and I will see you at the other end. Okay, so I'm just coming up now to the end of my 10th round around that neckline. And I think that's the perfect length. I think I really like how that looks. So I'm going to just yarn over, pull a loop through, cut my yarn. I'm gonna weave in that end. Now we've got the seam on the one side. I'll trim my ends on there. And now we can flip it right side out so that the seam is nice and clean. And now I have one more thing I want to do to finish up this project. It's the last step. And that is just to be uh, finishing off these raw ends because we've got that area where the shoulders attached that isn't totally smooth because it was single crocheted together there. So what we're going to do is attach our yarn somewhere on the back. Doesn't really matter where. Uh, I'm going to use my six millimeter hook still. So I'm going to just put my hook through two loops on either side. I'm using one strand of yarn again rather than two. And then I'm going to pull up a loop There we go. And then I'm gonna chain two, one and two. And now I'm just going to front post, back post, double crochet. And I'm just going to front post, back post, double crochet with my six millimeter hook. I'm gonna do it for two rounds on uh, this long side. So I'm not going to be doing a huge amount of it and I'm not shrinking it down with the four millimeter hook. I'm going to stick with the six millimeter hook for both rounds. And this is just to finish it up. We're not trying to 
change anything about the shape with this. We're just trying to make a nice finished edge. So that's what that's gonna do. So I'm gonna go around these raw edges two times with my front post, back post, double crochet, but with one strand of the green yarn. Hey friends, before I show you the final project, I just wanted to pop in here and invite you to join my Patreon. For $2 a month, you get access to all of my bullet journal patterns, all of the designs that I make for each of the videos that I film. I do extra things in there as well, and patrons get access to all of those spreads. So for two bucks, you get that, as well as exclusive access to the Last Minute Laura Discord. This is like a chat room full of last minute Laura folk, lots of crafty people, lots of yarny friends, and lots of people to chat to. It's a really nice community. You can upload photos of projects you're working on, you can ask questions, and there's just a nice big live community of people who are happy to help. I'm in there too, and we pretty much just use it to communicate, and during the live streams, I go in there to see things that you guys are talking about uh, so that we have stuff to talk about during the streams. So. If that sounds like something that's up your alley, definitely check it out. I will put the link in the description below. Uh, so if that sounds like something you're into, definitely check it out. Okay, now the final reveal. Da 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 da! What do you think? Oh gosh, I actually really like it. I thought at first maybe, I don't know, was it gonna be something that I was actually gonna get wear out of? But now that I'm kind of like, wearing it around the house. I'm finding it the perfect amount of warmth for like a nice warm morning, you know? Sometimes it's just, it's not a terribly cold morning in the early bits of spring, the late bits of winter. And this is just kind of like a little shrug. It's snuggly and it's cute and it's cozy. And it's great for just when I wanna walk to the chicken coop and grab some eggs, but I don't really wanna like put my whole coat on. This is super fun. I think it would be pretty easy to add a hood if you wanted to, or to even extend the triangle to just keep going to make it bigger and bigger so that you can have a larger cloak sort of triangle shawl thing. You could also, after sewing it together, do a whole bunch of rounds to extend it down. Same sort of idea to make a cloak sort of thing, but I don't know, I kinda like how this looks. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below how you like this. A nice little green triangle thing for St. Patrick's Day. Um, I really hope that you liked the video and I hope to see you tomorrow in the live stream. Thank you so much for watching. Happy St. Patrick's Day and I'll see you next time. Bye.